Greetings and salutations. Visigoth here, and today I'm going to be doing another uh, Neverwinter found request review. Uh, this one's called All's Fair in Love and War, and it's by Ortex Explorer. <laughs> it's an interesting name. And of course, the short code is listed here. And it seems like a very different quest than all the ones I've played yet, so it should be interesting. It says, Explore the lighter side of Neverwinter. Your choice determines the outcome. Ooh, your choices. You've just received a letter from Megan, an old friend you haven't seen for a while. Her letter states that an elf and a dwarf <laughs> who hate each other have each asked her to marry them. <laughs> okay, this is a very interesting quest. She is confused and would like your advice. I don't remember meeting anyone named Megan. A light-hearted dialogue-driven story with combat and a surprise or two along the way. Feel free to explore. There are several jokes hidden in plain sight. You'll laugh, you'll cry. It'll become a part of your personal history in Everwinter. <laughs> Just from the description, it, it does seem like uh, this is probably a quest I will remember for quite some time. I've already accepted it. I can honestly say that I've yet to play any quest that seems at all like this. Alright, speak with Megan. So let's find out where Megan is. Hopefully she's somewhere in Protector's Enclave, since that's where I started. Hmm. So many quest objectives. Holy crap. Which one is she? Okay. Ahead. Hope they all get a level 54. I started to grind up to 60, but then I kind of burn out and went back to working on uh, making foundry content. Okay, so Megan's in a sewer. Hmm. Interesting development. Oh, wait. Shit, I should have read that. <laughs> it popped up too slow. Well, at least I'll get a chance to drink some tea. Well, this is taking a little bit of time to load. This might be a reasonably large map. Come on, computer, you can do it. Or you can let me down and just freeze. Come on, little load bar. Look at it, it's just... Barely inching along. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> That's probably the longest load I've had in this entire game. This is a little unnerving. I went in a tiny little gate, which usually goes to a sewer, and came out an extremely large gate somewhere else in Neverwinter City. Okay. Hmm. Nice. Nice map. Very relaxed. Oh, there's Megan. Oh, fucking lag. Oh, quit it. Stupid rubber band. Press B to talk to Megan. Hello, Megan. Megan, your outfit is atrocious. <laughs> your sense of color is terrible. Megan sees you approaching and excitedly waves you over. Greetings, Visigoth. It has been far too long since we last spoke. How have you been? I don't remember ever speaking to you. Oh my god. <laughs> this is creepy. She's a stalker. You know how it is. Never a dull moment, never winter. Well, this is quaint. Truer words have never been spoken. Things are calm today, but I fear that darker days are coming to Neverwinter. Eh, that's true. But you must be wondering why I sent you that letter asking you to come see me. I thought it was because two guys asked you to marry you, or asked you to marry them. To be honest, the thought did cross my mind. Eh. Recently I have been happy and at peace <laughs> for the first time in a long time. 
but my world has been turned upside down. I just received two marriage proposals on the very same day. I should be thrilled, but in truth, I am not certain what I should do. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's just, I guess I've never experienced anything like this before in my life, so this concept kind of throws me. Two proposals on the same day, huh? Wow. But surely you must have some idea which of these two lucky fellows you would like to marry. Yeah, I would think so. Jeez. <laughs> That's just it. I am equally fond of them both. Oh, what a two-timer. Which is why I asked you here. When I heard you had returned to Neverwinter, I thought about my father and how he always gave such perfect advice. Well, then why are you talking to me? You were there the day he died, if you recall. No, I don't at all, but this is interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm really a fan of, of, like, telling me something that I've done before. I don't know. I remember he saved my life more than once. I am in your debt. Okay. He always spoke so highly of you. This is, like, true role-playing. <laughs> like, like, so many things get called role-playing. This is totally role-playing. Apparently I'm playing the role of someone that knew her and her family in the past. <laughs> Alright, he always spoke so highly of you. One of my suitors is a dwarf named Ghibli. Oh god. <laughs> the other an elf called Elsie. Els Elisa. That's a... I'm not sure how to say that. Be forewarned that they... well... They do not like each other very much. Well, yeah. Why would they? I mean, they both want to marry the same chick. You are always a good judge of character, Visigoth. I trust that you will give me good advice. Hmm, I will help you. I have urgent business to attend to right now, but I will return shortly. I wonder if this actually does anything or if it's just an exit. Hmm, I think it's just an exit, but there is a possibility that it triggers some sort of side event. But without exploring the entire map, I won't know. But let's go. Greetings, Visigoth. It has been far. Okay, it starts over completely. Hmm. Alright, I guess I'll help you. I want to move forward in time. Thank you. My quest is a simple one. Speak to both. Ellis, Alicia, I have no clue how to pronounce that, and Ghibli. Gilby, maybe that's what it is, Gilby. Seize, size them up, see if either one has any ulterior motives. Decide who you would advise me to choose. I am still not sure exactly what to look for. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> why are you letting somebody else make your choices? Oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> What a flaky girl. I'm still not sure exactly what to look for. Okay. It is hard to explain. When I ask certain questions, it seems like they tell me what they think I want to hear. I want you to find out the truth. Well, what makes you think they'll tell me the truth? I guess I should tell you a little more about my life oh, these days. This is going to be a lot of dialogue, isn't it? <sighs> I drink a little bit of tea. Alright. I would very much like to have children someday. Ooh, good for you. Also, religion is extremely important to me. I pray to Tamora daily for good fortune. Hmm, okay. I love cats and reading poetry. <laughs> Not some bad interest. And spending time outdoors. And I've actually become quite good at archery. Oh, cool. I'd like to join the City Watch someday. How old is she? I mean, she kind of looks like she should already be in the City Watch. Tell me more about the two guys. Alright. You see, is clever and serious. Okay. He loves to collect ancient scrolls and stamps. Huh. Sounds kind of boring. <laughs> Gilby is fun and dependable. He has a big collection of cats and exotic animals. <laughs> Right on. I feel safe and content when I'm around them both. I seem to recall you used to really love music. 
Okay. Oh yes, you do remember. Music warmed my heart. I also love to go out to see plays. There are some great actors in Protector's Enclave. You should come with me sometime to watch them perform. <sighs> I will do that. Pause. Pause. Okay, this is kind of throws me off. I'm not used to this. So much has happened since we last spoke. It seems you're all grown up now. <laughs> it's, it's almost like uh, reading like a script for a uh, movie. Like actual actors, like uh, directions. <laughs> During your acting, pause. <laughs> and you as well. Come to the wedding and we can catch up over a glass of mead. It's weird. <laughs> mead doesn't usually go with glass. I'm used to drinking it in like a mug. <laughs> and laugh about the good old days. Life was so much simpler back then, wasn't it? It's funny, I feel lately like both Ghibli and Elise oh, I was going to drive me up the wall, are keeping a secret from me. I'd like to know what it is. Ah, it is wonderful to see you again, Visigoth. Thank you for coming. And your timing is excellent. They are both in the Cloak and Dagger pub right now. Okay, wait a second. I totally just skipped. Like, the text just went haywire. <laughs> I think uh, something got accidentally copied and pasted in or something. Or I completely missed something. I mean, like, is this intentional? See, this is the problem with stuff like this. There are enough... How would I put it? Not, I don't want to say bad quests, but... Honestly, that's, that's kind of what it is. There are enough bad quests where people do things poorly that y you can never be sure if someone is intentionally doing something to add to the story or if it's because they accidentally messed up. So this kind of threw me. The way this immediately switches like she forgot that she sees me or something like that it's off-putting enough that it makes me wonder if it's intentional or if it's an accident. Like, and you as well, come to the wedding, and we can catch... See, like, I will do that. Pause. So, much has happened since we last spoke. It seems you're all grown up now. And you as well, come to the wedding, and we can catch up over a glass of mead and laugh about the good old days. Life was so much simpler back then, wasn't it? Like, here she's already established who she's marrying, and they've got a date, like a wedding date set. It's funny, I feel lately like both Ghibli and Elise are keeping a secret from me. I'd like to know what it is. And yet, this goes back to the, kind of like the previous setup. And then this jumps again. Ah, it is wonderful to see you again. Isagoth, thank you for coming. And your timing is excellent. They are both in the Cloak and Dagger pub right now. Like, this, I don't know, there's something weird about this. Alright, let me move on. That's been two hours on this. I will speak with the elf and the dwarf. Alright. Ah, fucking lag. Hate rubber banding back and forth. Rest with the wall. Enter the cloak and dagger and find the two people. Alright. Acknowledge. What? There is definitely something weird going on here. Alright. I gotta admit, puzzles are a little more entertaining than redundant <laughs> quests. At least it gives you something to like actually wrap your brain around. Let's look and see if there's any more strangely named NPCs. But again, you know, it kind of, annoyingly it kind of always goes back to wondering, is it intentional or is the author accidentally messing up? <laughs> oh, there's somebody. What's he say? See, like, he's strangely placed. Wanderer. Oh, this is perplexing. Because the author left me a review on my quest, and he seemed 
rather astute and well educated. So I'd kind of surprised to think that those are accidental. Acknowledge. Alright. Let's see. Up to no good. Okay. That one I kind of get a kick out of. That one I understand. But this one throws me off. Acknowledge. Hmm. And so does this one. Wanderer. Although I could totally see Wanderer fitting into a typical, you know, kind of somewhat generic role for an RPG. Gossip. Heresy. Oh, this is so weird. Oh, it's going to take a little while to kind of grasp what's going on here. Gossip and heresy. Huh. I wonder if there's any more. I think I'll go inside the Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> I kind of get a kick out of the Cloak and Dagger title. That's pretty good. <laughs> Press B to enter the Cloak and Dagger. I gotta admit, I like the idea of puzzles more than the actual act of trying to figure them out. <laughs> I'm definitely more of a 3D puzzle kind of person. <laughs> Less of a dialogue. Clone potion salesman. Want to buy some clone potion? Imagine... Oh, wait, what was it? Come back around dialogue. Let's take his outfit. I like how he's... I like the animation, too. He's, like, actually holding up. Okay, want to buy some potion? Imagine all the things two of you could do. Oh, heavens forbid. Double Trouble the Rogue. <laughs> so I guess she got a hold of the clone potion. Yep, it's like an exact clone. Double Trouble the Rogue. The names are really throwing me off a little bit. Some of them are like descriptive, some of them are kind of vague. Flo, the bartender. Some of them are like actual names. Oh, I hate Flo. Kill flow. Dave. And Dave is Plague Starred or whatever. That's interesting. And Message Board Troll. I'm not quite sure. I like the little shrunken troll though. I'm not sure what that's supposed to imply. Sam the bartender here, okay. And here's the dwarf. Gilby. More duck. The mediocre. <laughs> okay. This is so strange. <laughs> Gandar the Great. I hope there's not like a shitload of uh, subcontext here that I'm missing. <laughs> J Rock. C dub. Yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff in here that I just goes right over my head. Bob from marketing. Okay. Cryptic programmer. <laughs> okay. Mysterious Ranger. Oh. Let's see what we got back here. Tyrone. Tiffany. Amber. Candy. Oh my god, so much strippers. Mildred. <laughs> there we go. Ethel. <laughs> Random elf. This is so weird! <laughs> Teenage witch. Oh my god, is that like Sabrina? <sighs> okay, there's the elf. Okay, I'm back to the beginning. Let's see what's in the back room. Oh, there'll be a dwarf. Random dwarf. Okay. <laughs> <Let's> see. 
just for my personal sake, this is how mead should be drunk. Just uh, jam your sword in here and lay down. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to the elf. See what he has to say. Liesel stands glaring across the room at Ghibli. At Gilby. As you approach, he turns to regard you with cold curiosity. Okay. Who are you, and what do you want? So I wonder if this is supposed to be, like, informative. I mean, it is in yellow. I'm curious, other than the fact that they hate each other, and I already know that. What is this trying to inform me of? Hmm. I'm a friend of Megan's. I would simply like to speak with you for a few minutes. He sighs. I know why you're here. We find ourselves in an awkward position, do we not? Very well, then. What do you wish to know? Tell me a little about yourself. I am a simple elf. Training to be a wizard, my loyalty lies with Neverwinter, my family, and Megan. Yeah, that's respectable. Nothing else matters. Well, I don't know about that. Loyalty is in short supply these days. Indeed. The main thing you should take away from this conversation is what a scoundrel that dwarf is. I mean, look at the filthy beard. <laughs> of course, you know, the funny thing about this, you know, as a side note, I'm totally a dwarf, so I'm kind of taking offense to this. This uppity elf. Could you imagine trying to kiss that face? Shudders. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is an interesting way to throw in some uh, some emotes and stuff. Go ahead then. Ask your question. I'm gonna kick him in the nuts. <laughs> I am curious about your thoughts on religion and the goodness and the goddess Chiramor, Ty Moria, in particular. I'm a terrible reader. <laughs> What is your opinion of music and the arts? Hmm. Are you comfortable around children? Hmm. Do you enjoy spending time outdoors? Those are all my questions. Alright, well, I guess we'll have to run through all these. I am devoted to the goddess, Megan. Alright, I'm devoted to the goddess. Megan introduced me to the Order. You can never have too much good fortune in this crazy world. Yeah, see, I'm kind of at a disadvantage here. I don't know a crap ton about D and D lore, so... I don't know anything about this goddess. But of course, I'm starting to get the impression that she's uh, a goddess of good fortune, I guess. We know all the luck we can get. Okay. Indeed. The main thing you should take away from... Oh, it goes back to the beginning. Okay. What is your opinion of music and the arts? I do enjoy a good play. Megan and I have gone to see several. I do not like music very much. I respect the skill of the musicians. You don't like any music, seriously? Like, none whatsoever? That's so strange. Do you play an instrument? Yes. I'm pretty good, actually. No, there's never enough time to practice. Understandable. In times like these, there's little time for leisure. Music will still have a place, even in the darkest of days. Of course, you know, if he's going to plays and such, that's definitely leisure, so he's making time. Alright. Indeed. Back to the beginning. Okay. Let's ask him about his comfortableness with children. Ack! To be honest, I hate the little buggers. <laughs> Always running around, getting into everything. I agree with him. Kids can be so annoying. <laughs> but you may have already noticed that I am quite clever. If the Lady Megan wishes to have a child, I suppose it is something I will have to carefully consider. Okay, interesting. Alright, let's ask him what his opinion is on the outdoors. As you may know, we elves are at home in the woods. I spend a great deal of time there. Okay. But to be particularly honest, I am n most content curled up before the fire with a good scroll. That's kind of a shut-in book bookworm. Good answer. Okay. I guess that's it. Those are all my questions. Oh! Listen, adventurer, we seem to be at odds here, but I sense that you are an honorable friend to Megan. Why are we at odds? 
I'm quite sure about that. And this is trying to imply something that wasn't readily apparent earlier. Before you leave, I wish to convince I wish to convince you of one thing, and one thing only. <laughs> yeah, your right to marry her. Let's see. <laughs> Actually, make that two things. The first being that dwarves are unclean and foul creatures that really should bathe more. <laughs> no offense. Yeah, you're damn straight. You better be no offense. I'm a dwarf. I'll kick you in the nuts. The second and by far most important thing is that when it comes to the safety and happiness of our fair Megan, I can assure you my aim is true. Oh, that's, you know, that's admirable. That's good to know. I want to ask a question again. Nope, I'm done. I have my eye on a nice house in a village just outside of town. The seller owes me a favor, so I know I can get a good price. Megan would love it. <laughs> of course, it's probably overrun with undead or, you know, being attacked by a dracolid, sure, you know, but yeah, sure, it'll be pretty. <laughs> I'm sure she would. Oh, Jesus, it never ends. <laughs> Before you leave, may I have a word? I have hidden an enchanted bow in my guild hall. I was saving it as a present to give to Megan when the time was right. I sense that time is now. Please retrieve the bow and bring it to Megan as a token of my devotion. That's cute. She's, you know, getting into archery, so that's a thoughtful gift. But be careful. I fear that dwarf will do anything to try and stop you. Nah, dwarves aren't like that. Don't worry. I can take care of myself. I'll get the bow. I don't get to talk to the dwarf. Wait, okay, yeah, I do. Oh, I, keep, oh, I don't know why I keep turning that thing off. It's going to pop back up anyways. It still drives me up the wall. Ghibli has spent the better part of the afternoon glaring at face. As you approach, he stops long enough to scowl at you. Don't scowl at me, you dirty little dwarf. <laughs> Buddy, you need to run a run a comb through that hair. It's I I, uh, I don't like how the author is portraying dwarves. Yeah, this is not this is not acceptable. <laughs> Hi, laddie. And just who might you be? I saw you talking to that villager, that villainous elf. And I should warn you, I know karate. <laughs> what? <laughs> Relax, Ghibli. Gilby. I'm an old friend of Megan's. I just want to talk to you. Well met. Any friend of Megan's is a friend of mine. Except for that purpose, except for that pompous elf. He fills me with rage. I mean, just look at him. Look at him! I am looking. I am looking. He seems like a normal elf to me. I totally get in the feeling that the author is an elf, or likes, prefers elves and does not have much interest in dwarves. <laughs> exactly. Oh, this is quite a bit of text. When I was a wee lad, my daddy used to say, Son, there are three things you can't trust in the crazy world. In this crazy world. Going into a skirmish with people you don't know. Those who try to predict the weather. And an elf. No offense. Okay. <laughs> And did you notice the ears? I know they usually have big ears, but these are like swords. Can you imagine learning, leaning in to kiss that face? <laughs> Could poke an eye out with those sort of things. <laughs> this is so weird. Ah, uh, you guys seem to spend an inordinate amount of time thinking about the other. Never mind. I am going to change the subject now before things get weird. Oh, they got weird a long time ago. What would be truly weird would be for Megan to marry that fool when she could marry me instead. What is it you want, anyway? Tell me a little about yourself. My name is Ghibli. Or Gilby. I'm a local merchant here in the neighborhood selling axes and anvils and what have you. I have been training as a guardian fighter. I love exotic animals. Oh, interesting transition. <laughs> I'm a bit of a fixer-upper, and I like scented candles and a good foot massage. Ack! I don't get the ack part, but okay. 
My goodness, this is awkward. I asked for Megan's hand, but since I could not ask her father for permission to marry, I suppose you'll have to do, because it's obvious why you're here. Yeah, okay. See, I like that. Dwarves are insightful. <laughs> I'm just gathering information. <sighs> Stop delaying then and ask your question. Could you see yourself having kids someday? I love children. Come from a family of eleven myself. <laughs> I do. That's good. <laughs> oh, that animation looks awkward. He looks like he's a uh, special ed child. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's uh it's hard to line up like arm length and such. That doesn't include all the cousins and nephews hanging around either. You can imagine there were not a lot of wait. You can imagine there was not a lot of peace and quiet in the household. But oh the fun we had. The more the merrier, I say. It's a lot of kids. Yeah, it is. But of course, you know, they didn't have television or the internet, so what else was there to do besides slay dragons and undead? <laughs> do you have any brothers or sisters yourself? Nope, I am an only child. Sorry to hear that. It's nice to have other kids around to play with when you're young. Agreed. Stop delaying then and ask your questions. Alright. What do you think about music and the arts? I like to listen to the musicians play very much. Didn't understand the plays Megan dragged me to at all, though. Huh. Interesting. But he didn't say he didn't like it. He just said he didn't understand it. All right. Interested in religion at all? What do you think of the goddess Timor in particular? Arg! It's all a bunch of poppycock, if you ask me. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what that word is. Fuck me. <laughs> Pablum for the masses. Oh, I should know what that is. As for the name you mentioned, it means nothing to me. But I know it means a lot to Megan. It is something that I must learn to tolerate. Eh. Definitely a good idea. Alright, do you like spending time outdoors? I do not. Although I can frolic around outside as well as the next dwarf. To be honest, I am most happy underground. Aye! <laughs> Crypts and dungeons may not hold the attention of most folk, but they are almost as enjoyable to spend time in as this bar. <laughs> Understood. I'm out of questions. Listen to me, Visigoth. If that is your real name, I may not be the smartest dwarf in the mi in the mine shaft. <laughs> That's cute, but I know a few things. Always keep your axe blade sharp. Look both ways before you cross a wagon path, <laughs> and never ever trust an or an elf. <laughs> that is cute. I like to look both ways before you cross a wagon path. If you are concerned about my intentions, they could not be more pure. I love the less. Pure and simple. Crazy though she may be. Yeah, she does seem crazy. <laughs> Let her know she means everything to me. I'll do that. I have a friend at the City Watch. I will put in a good word. Perhaps they could use Megan's skill with a bow. She'd like that. Oh, one more thing before you go. Oh, only one more? I have hidden a magical loot in a crypt nearby. It was meant to be a wedding gift for Megan, but I ask you to retrieve it now. Give it to her as a token of my affection. I don't know why she'd like a loot. She'd probably prefer the bow. Be careful, though. I have a sneaking suspicion that dastardly elf will try to stop you. He's, he does things like that. <laughs> I'll get the loot, and I'll be careful. Thank you for your time. Honestly, so far, this isn't my kind of quest. <laughs> I'm finding it extremely boring. But you can't please everybody all the time. The story's cute, but it's not my kind of uh, things like 
trying to decide which person to marry or just <laughs> does not interest me. You'd think the girl would know. Alright, find the bow of enchantment. Ooh. Wandering aimlessly. These names drive me up the wall. <laughs> yes, yes, he is walking around. I guess he's aimlessly wandering. Oh look, he jumps. And then he stands on top of this thing. Okay. He seems new though, so I wonder if any of the other ones have changed. Gossip. Heresy. On his way somewhere. <laughs> I mean, this is an interesting way to do it. If it was more consistent, I think I'd get a kick out of it. Instead of having some of them... And his path is totally screwed up. Who needs to, like... Well, I guess you can't... They don't go down inclines very well. I tried that. Oh, here's a ghost. Random ghost. <laughs> oh, clever. <laughs> Let's look back here. What I was saying is, um, if the names were more consistent, like describing, I don't know, like their actions, I guess, like how this one's like on his way somewhere. Random ghost doesn't really fit into that. It's just like, oh, it's it's a random ghost. Okay. And if this was like gossiping instead of just gossip, and heresy is kind of weird. I don't, not, I don't even understand how that's supposed to fit in. And like the same thing within the bar. Some are more descriptive like that, some are more like regular names. It's just a little confusing. It makes it less clear what the intent is when it's inconsistent. Alright, let's go back here. Anything else? Oh! And a random wizard. See? Like, why is there a red wizard just standing here and I can't kill him. <laughs> Die, wizard of Fay. Nope, can't kill him. Okay. Press B to enter LC's guild hall. Okay. Oh, this is terrible. So far, I don't, I don't mean the quest, I mean I feel terrible about this, but so far I'm really not liking this quest so much it doesn't fit me and that's totally thrown off my sense of like how to rate it because I don't want to rate it just because of my experience I want to rate it for its quality based towards other quests oh look there's dwarves oh I have to kill a dwarf dwarf clones <laughs> So I guess these are supposed to be clones of the guy. Okay. There's a giant statue inside of his killed hall. Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, physics! Yay! Oh, no physics. That's lame. Sheep, solid as a wall. And a chest of. Drawers. I guess this is supposed to be like this, because you stand from this side? Huh. Cages... And whatever the fuck that crazy tentacle thing was supposed to be. And chairs, and an altar. Another angry dwarf. It's a good day to die. Hmm. Hmm, details. Fun. It's got some stuff in it, which is cool. Maps seem to be pretty nice so far. Combat isn't like crazy overpowered difficult. Fits into the story. Mobs fit into the story.
You know, it's not like Cthulhu Mind Flayers or anything, which would fit in. a trap. It must be this map. I tend to see that little flame a lot. It's kind of strange. I figure I'll just do a little bit of exploring before I follow, follow the sparkly trail. Flesh! Wait, what? Oh, I couldn't read that fast enough. I like that the uh, encounters are named in a way that it helps you figure out what the purpose or what uh, what role they play in the quest. That's good. All right, Evie, get the fuck out of the way. That transition is weird. I swear I saw some loot. Bismuth cube. Okay, not sure why that's here. It's a serious bedroom. That's a serious nightlight. Holy crap. <laughs> Kinda makes the lighting here a little weird. Almost a little bit too much light. Okay, it's like a kitchen, scullery, dinner table type thing. Alright. Respawn point, bar. It's kind of like a. almost like a gentleman's club. Oh! Gentlemen's Club in the concept of like, uh, or in the sense of like the, the Masons, like the Masonic Lodge, not like as in like a strip club. <laughs> Chicken and unnamed. Okay, that's weird. Chicken. Yeah, I always think fireplaces need chimneys. Holy crap! We've got horns now! What is that about? Seven dwarves. Okay, so they're named after the seven dwarves. I don't remember Doc. That was new. Why do they have horns? They just to like spice it up, make them interesting. Or it's supposed to like fit in to something for the quest. It's kind of weird. So apparently the dwarf isn't as nice as a fellow as he should be. Sending clones of himself to stop me from collecting a gift. Poor taste. Ooh, it's like a... Okay, I get it. Totally ties into the Snow White thing. Prepare to meet your maker! Whoa! And this one's actually named Angry Ghibli Clone. Gilby. I always pronounce that wrong. So like, what, did you have some cloning mishaps along the way? <laughs> it's like a clone of a clone of a clone of a clone. <laughs> there were some copying errors. <sighs> I 
just isn't my kind of story. I want to complete it and give it a fair rating, but I'm bored out of my mind. Magic chest of illusion. Press B to search for the bow of enchantment. Well, shit. If I know if it's a magic chest of illusion, I don't want to search it. It'd probably take me forever to find it because it's an illusion. Uh, nope, it's just a regular chest. Okay. The magical bow of enchantment infused with the essence of red roses. Hmm, okay. Wait, did that door just appear out of nowhere? I think it did. I would suggest, like, moving that back a little bit farther so it blends in. I don't know, maybe throw in, like, a false wall there and put it up against the wall. And instead of having it just, like, appear, have it there the whole time and then just make it so it's active when you're gonna leave. Like, um, as a tip, I know you can't uh, select. Um, wait a second, that doesn't make any sense. If it just appeared, yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> never mind. That was just a little awkward. Having a door appear out of nowhere. I'm trying to think how it would like if it's supposed to be something to fit into the quest. Like playing along with the like seven dwarves. At a certain point, it's hard to tell if uh, something is just like a cameo, or like an Easter egg, or if it's supposed to be like part of the story. Okay, so I'm not... Oh, I must be going to get the dwarves. And of course, now, probably, if this is, uh... Going to be, uh... What's a nice way to say it? I imagine I'm probably going to run into clones of the elf. Looks suspicious. Looks familiar. He does look familiar. Funny enough, that's the same NPC I used as my scribe. <laughs> But um, this is a little more consistent. See, this is like the other ones. If they were all named in a way that like fit into almost like a narration or like an inner monologue to yourself, it'd be more consistent and be easier to pick up on like the con the intent. Wait, is that Gaston the Wise? Yeah. See, like I guess he's an interactable, so having the real name for him is okay. Like it makes sense. But any of the ones that you can interact with. If they stayed consistently like this, it'd be a little more fun. Press B to talk to Gaston. Gaston Wise. We must hurry. Which way is the Leaning Tower of Doom? Huh? I have no idea. Yes, I get a feeling that there's like a ton of like Easter eggs here. And so, like, I might get two or three of them. If there's, like, 80 in total, and I only get two or three, it kind of just makes all the others seem awkward and out of place. What do you mean? And where are all the panicked mobs of people? The screaming, the fire. You must know of the Doomsday device. Neverwinter is in great peril. I have no clue. <laughs> You shrug. I really have no idea what you're talking about. Gaston the Wise looks around in confusion, slowly taking in his surroundings. I'm in the wrong quest again, aren't I? Eh, this is weird. Sure sounds like it. 
This is a light-hearted comic adventure. Hmm, light-hearted, eh? Gaston the Wise thinks for a moment. Then surely there must be a pub nearby. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Back that way and hang a left. I like his expression changes. <laughs> Much obliged. And so begins the quest for the f frothy pint. <laughs> okay, that was kind of cute at the end there. I liked it. Yeah, because I have no idea what he's from. Oh, look at him. He's just walking through those bushes. You evil bastard! Stop walking on that lady's roses! <laughs> Alright, let's go see what else is going on. Time to adventure for the loot! See if I can mount up. Yes, I can! Awesome! One annoying thing I notice sometimes when you put down some, uh, like, background effects, it actually affects you being able to mount. So, restless. Well, I would be too if I was standing on top of somebody's stoop. For no reason. Okay. Press B to enter Ghibli's... Oh, I keep saying that. Gibby's. Gil Gilby's. There you go. Gilby's Crypt. Why is a door in town leading to a crypt? It's a well-hidden crypt! Yep, that totally throws me off. And I come out of this. That is so... jarring, I guess is the word I would use. Like, I would redo that. I mean... I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. And of course... Dark Elves... Rage Elf. <laughs> it looks like he's swinging a pick. What's up with that? I don't expect the dwarves to have a pick and a hammer. Dark Elves. Okay, so I guess the guy's a Dark Elf? But they're not Dark Elves. They're all, like, lightly colored. Yeah, they're copies. They're clones. So why are they called Dark Elves? Should they become called clones? Oh, this is totally screwing with my thought process. <laughs> oh, fuck me. That's what that was. And there's a cat down. Oh, yeah, because the guy likes cats and exotic animals. And a tiger. Okay. And another cat. I'm a big fan of cats. I love cats. The crypt is kind of weird. It's like oddly placed right underneath a little suburb of Neverwinter. You walk through a wooden door and come out in a crypt. And are attacked by... Oh, get out of the fucking screen. Damn it. Attack elves. Okay. Assassin Elf. Yeah, these names are a little inconsistent. It's because they're Dark Elves. Oh, I get it. You use Dark Elf encounters, and that's why it's Assassin Elf. And... Okay. That needs a little bit of work. You might want to go back and rename them uh, Elf Clone, like you did the others. Let's see if I get anything good. Righteous Boom. Nah. It's not too bad. Let's see what they're named. Dark Elves. Again, Dark Elves. Lone Wolf Elf. Why is it called? I think you need to revisit the names in all of your uh, elf encounters. Why is there like a blood altar down here in the dwarf's crib. This is so... <laughs> it's throwing me off, man. I 
Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a terrible writer. Writing and coming up with, like, the context of, like, quests or, like, stories or plot lines, definitely not my forte. So, I mean, you know, who am I to judge in someone's writing? <laughs> but, uh, for me personally, personally, this story is a little inconsistent. I'm finding it hard to, like, understand what the what the premise is. And the maps are disjointed. When I make maps, I try to, uh, of course I've already said this before in other videos, but it's true. <laughs> That's why I do it. I try to tell a story, a good story, you know, one that, like, makes sense while I'm, uh, making the map. So like for a crypt, I I, I would have either I don't know I honestly I probably would have used a crypt because it kind of doesn't fit in to the uh, Neverwinter you know suburb. This little sucker's got some heft behind him. Must be a I think he's an ogre. Ogre. me forever to kill freaking ogres, single targets. Of course I'm kind of undergeared. But yeah, see like a whatever you want to call this, but filled with blood. It doesn't really fit. Unless you're trying to make the dwarf like evil or I don't know. It's inconsistent. <laughs> what is this? It's a large box. Did you hide something? Oh, it's just a wall. Okay. It's like a divider. Cat. Dragon lane. That's cool. I'll get to actually use that. It's kind of a neat little NPC. Pig. Why is Pig's not exotic or a cat. What the heck? <laughs> tiger. Tiger. Straw beds. This is so strange. <laughs> Unpleasant elves. <laughs> Insane elf. Crazy elf. Lunatic elf. What is he like? Floating? Are they floating? That's weird. What animation is that? Unpleasant elves. Psychopathic. Elsie clone. Yes, Elseal. Demented elf. Okay. Well, let's go kill shit. I mean, it's consistent in some respects. I get their clones and the potion, you know, at the very beginning, so it's kind of like, okay, I get that. But the names don't really tell me anything extra. <laughs> it's just kind of like, there. Oh, I'm really finding it difficult to explain or give this a good review. <laughs> Because it's like I want to stay true to my word and give a review for a review, and I don't want to be rude. But this is not the kind of quest that I would usually play, so I'm kind of reviewing content that I'm already biased towards, which isn't fair because it's not a fair, unbiased review.
trying to think of things that I like and good points I can bring up. So it's not just me sitting here saying what I don't like. <laughs> Combat's well paced. You know, there's stuff to fight. It's not there's not boring stretches where there's nothing going on. And also it's not overpowered. This is I don't, I'm not quite sure why you did this this way. Like um you see that glitch right there? That's what happens when you line stuff up exactly like on the exact same plane and then you put it inside itself. It wants to render one before the other and then when you move the other one renders and then you move again and it renders the first one and it keeps doing that back and forth repeat, you know, infinitely. So that's why you get that weird little glitch. Like I wouldn't use this half partial wall or whatever this is. I'd just get like a large stone wall and put it here. I don't know, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit. And like, these columns don't really fit the look of the room. And they're not lined up to like the flying buttresses. I'm not quite. I don't know, this is a little odd. Inconsistent. So like this this kind of blends in more. This kind of squared. You know, does that squared. The color's a little lighter, but it's you know, this kind of makes fits the scene a little bit better. I would use only these columns. And make sure you go into 3D edit mode and move this, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but basically this needs to go, like if I'm facing this way, it needs to go to the left, and then it needs to go forward. So about right here would probably be centered. Yeah. And like this doesn't fit in, I'm not sure why this is here. Like, I don't know. And like, what is this supposed to be? Like, is this like... Supposed to be some sort of like altar that you pray to? Or is it just a little sitting area where you admire a large statue? That's what I mean by like context, like give your map context. That's really like the only thing I can uh, honestly uh, comment on, that I have any I have any right to comment on, is the, the map layout. I tend to uh, think that's that's where my strengths are. Yeah, see, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't line up with anything. It's just kind of like thrown in here. Like if you have to, if you're gonna put this here, you know, move it over so that like the two pillars or the two pieces on either end line up here with this. So the loot is inside a brazier. I don't get it. Why is the loot inside a brazier? A magical loot. Beautifully crafted with a near perfect tone. Like the writing's well done. I mean, there's definitely. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of like grammar errors, but. It doesn't really. The the what I'm doing is what doesn't make sense to me. Like the story from reading it, I get the story. It makes sense. I totally follow what's going along. But the actual like act of me doing the quest seems disjointed. Okay, and see so, like now there's a portal here that's sunken into the floor. Why did a portal pop up? I mean, like just randomly decided to make itself. Alright, so I'll exit through the portal. Oh. I mean, like, after you watch my review and tell me I'm an asshole, <laughs> which I'm sorry, I'm really not trying to come across as, as a rude jerk, but um, if you want, like, uh, I, I totally am willing to uh, give you any tips on ways that you might want to... Uh, make maps, you know, for your quest. 
like suggestions or anything like that. Or if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask me. Alright, let's return to Megan. Let's see, are they the same? Nope. Bit of a dullard. <laughs> Nobody interesting. Rabid dog. Well, they seem to be doing okay with it being rabid. It's kind of strange. Some other guy. See, I don't know, stuff like that kind of is not my forte. I'd rather just see, like, uh... Resident. <laughs> Resident. Resident, you know. I don't know. I guess it's just a personal preference. Return to Megan. Right, Megan, where be ye? Now here's Megan. Hello, Megan. Wait, wait, before I talk to you. Well, there's Gilby. And I thought I saw something else back here. That was strange. I could have sworn I saw like a cat or something. And here's the elf. And there's the chest. And that's like some sort of weird magical smoke effect. Okay. So I kind of get the idea, you know, once I complete the thing, the chest will be here. That's one way of doing it. I usually like to put the chest in context, you know, so it looks like it's part of the map, not just like an extra special, like, reward. You know, like, I'd have, like, a stack of, like, I don't know, crates or a wagon or something sitting here, and the chest would be on the wagon or next to it, you know, so it looks like it fits into something. Alright, let's talk to Megan. Hello, Megan. Purple hair and red shirt and boots. Not my choice in colors. <laughs> oh, you're back! I've got a little surprise for you. I have spent the afternoon thinking about what I should do, and after what has happened here today, I choose you! Aww, what a sweetie, Megan. Sorry, you're not my type. <laughs> I was wondering when you'd figure out who the only intelligent, attractive, and humble person around here is. Yeah, he seems very humble. <laughs> I'm not this kind of person. Uh, I'm sorry, Megan, but I'm not interested. Oh my. I guess I really shouldn't have freaked you out like that. It was a joke. I was only kidding. I, okay, what? I, I knew that. Megan laughs heartily. We used to always play practical jokes on each other. I think I got you this time. At any rate, we must move on to a more serious topic, for a difficult decision must be made. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know, it's just personal preference, but I don't like this kind of role playing where I'm like not being able to choose what kind of character I am, but I'm being told what I've done in the past, and, you know, that's not my kind of stuff. What is your advice? I've given this a lot of thought, and I want to make it clear that both of these gentlemen are fine, upstanding citizens. But you can only get married once, right? They're not fine, upstanding citizens. Both of them are jerks. They made clones of themselves and sent them to attack the other. That's not good. Don't marry either one of them. They're douchebags. Oh, there was that thing about the royal divorce, but generally, yes. Okay, what? I, I don't get this. What is this? So I may only pick one, and without further ado... So I bet you, like, if I knew all of the freaking uh, context for all of, all of these, like, innuendos and and, like, little Easter eggs, this would make so much more sense to me, and I would probably think it was, like, a cute, light-hearted, and funny story. But I don't know most of this stuff. <laughs> Not, the only thing that really, like, triggered in my mind were, like, the Seven Dwarves, and... Jeez, I think that was it. Megan pauses and appears sad for a moment, then resolves to carry on. Someone's feelings are going to be hurt, regardless. Okay, but a choice must still be made. Choose the dwarf. I don't want to choose either one of them. Both of them are douchebags. But I'm a dwarf, so let's go with dwarfs. That's amazing! 
Just when you began to spoke, I realized in my heart that it just had to be Gilby. <laughs> okay, what? I love that dwarf, and the lute of harmony plays such wonderful music. Then when you said Gilby's name, I just knew I'd made the right decision. Thank you so much for helping me out, Visigoth. Congratulations. It's been a very strange day. What the hell, I'm gonna get attacked? And about to get stranger! Okay, and I didn't get to finish dialogue, because I didn't click fast enough. So here's the elf clone. Okay. So, he didn't get picked, so he's angry and he's gonna try and kill us all. Well, at least his clones are. Ogres. <laughs> it takes me forever to kill them. And they hit so freaking hard. I don't hit very hard at all. <laughs> Such a pain in the ass. I really just need to break down and go and buy gear. Oh, jeez. That was like, drove me up the wall when the game first launched, well, when the game first went into open beta, everybody and their brother was making those uh, ogre farming maps. I fucking hated that. Oh my god. Framing on me like hardcore. Just don't be seem to be doing any damage to these fuckers. Holy crap. pissing me off. I keep logging on to get my Celestial Coin, and every time I get my Celestial Coin, they give me a huge chunk of freaking experience. I don't want the experience. <laughs> I'm tired of leveling up and not having the right freaking gear. Then I have to deal with shit like this. <laughs> I guess once I get to 60, it won't be an issue ever again. I don't need to play alts. Although, I don't know, if they come out with a cleric where I can use a shield and a mace, I'll totally re-roll for that. Oh, I'm gonna die! Fuck me! Uh, it's right next to me, so I don't have to go too far. So let's just do this. Don't let this fight reflect on uh, combat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody else that has gear doesn't have as much of a problem. Oh, at least their health didn't reset, thank god. <sighs> I hope they're not going to spawn again if I go through her dialogue. That would suck. That's strange. Was it fight to? Okay, what? Where did what? Why did we just what? Why did the elf appear? What? Weren't those both clones? Was or was it like fight to submission, and he just got replaced? I'm lost. Thank you for being on. Oh, just come on, dialogue pop up again. At least this will give me a chance to drink some tea. I swear it's killing me. <laughs> Thank you for being a good friend to my dear Megan, I think is what it said. Let's talk to Megan. 
Oh, you're back. I've got a little surprise for you. I spent... Oh, it did fucking start over again because I didn't get to finish it. Oh. Alright, let's see if it spawns his ass again. Because I want to know what the ending was. Thank you so much for helping me out, Visigoth. Congratulations. It's been a very strange day, and about to get stranger. Talk to Megan. Okay. Thank you for sparing his life. Oh, that is what it was. I guess it was a fight to submission. See, if you're going to do that, then go back and rename that NPC, the encounter, to match the guy, so it literally is like him and not a clone. And make sure that the outfits match exactly. I'm sorry for what you had to go through today. This was all my fault. It's okay. Oh, we did what had to be done. I hope that he will still be my friend. Yeah, even though we like fought to the death, almost swinging my sword and hunking, you know, cutting chunks out of his flesh until he finally surrendered, he'll still be our friend. But it will take some time for today's wounds to heal. Thank you again, Visigoth. You are a true hero. I will be sure to send you a wedding invitation when the time comes. You know, I think we learned something here today. Sometimes you have to make a tough decision where there's no easy answer and there will be consequences no matter what you do. You just have to follow your heart and do what you feel is right. We can only live by... Uh, we can only live each day to the fullest and hope to survive to live another day. I didn't learn any of that. What I learned was I was forced to tell her what she should have known herself because she shouldn't be relying on other people to make her decisions for her, especially when regarding love and like who she's going to marry. And even though I like dwarves, he was kind of an asshole. <laughs> Both of them sent freaking clones of themselves to the other's place to stop whoever was going to help them, or even stop themselves, you know, like vice versa. Like the dwarf was going to kill the elf and prevent him from giving his gift to her. And the same was the elf was going to do to the dwarf. Oh, I don't like this at all. <laughs> Talk to Megan again. Seriously? What the hell? <laughs> Thank you for sparing us. I already did this. That's pretty deep. Oh, I didn't... Oh, I must have fucked up and not clicked the... Ah, so I must have accidentally clicked done. Been working on that speech for a while. <laughs> Megan Lass then begins to cry. Aww. She's one of those girls. When she gets drunk, she can't decide what she wants to do. It's so hard sometimes to know what is right. But when I made my decision, I knew it was the right one. You mean the decision that I told you to make? <laughs> and we all have to live with the consequences. Besides, you know what they say. No. All's fair in love and war. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Collect reward. Okay. <clears throat> Just to try and wrap this up, I'm going to try and separate my feelings and my personal preferences so I can give an unbiased review of, of what I think would make the quest better. <sighs> Where to start? Um, I think uh, it, it would be a little clearer to the player um, to go back and, and check your NPC's names and pick like what your style is trying to be. If you want it to be from the perspective of like that's kind of like an inner monologue that you're you know like I the player or not even I see that's what's weird it's not even me that I realize because how would I know like that guy is walking off to go somewhere that I don't know where it is, or, or you know, like you either reword it so it's like a personal inner monologue, like I'm looking at someone and saying, "Oh, he's going off somewhere I don't know," and oh, that person is is obviously chattering away, so they're gossiping or something, 
or write it from the sense of a narration. You know, there is a, a, a second or third party that is telling me what is going on in their lives without actually me being aware of it in that sense. I don't know. It's I don't know how to explain it. You know, because there, there's in my in you know from looking at it, there's either my character, like Visigoth, the dwarf that I'm playing, is being told things in the world, or me, the player, is reading something and understanding what it is, or you, the author, is telling me, the player, what's going on, or you, the author, is telling my character what's going on. You know, there's there's multiple ways that you can present the story. I think if you pick one and, and stay with it, it'll make it more, um, more, more, I don't know how to say it, more together, you know, it'll, it'll make the flow work, oh jeez, I just went completely brain dead. <laughs> this is what happens when I try to think outside of my own personal box. It takes me a little while to form my thoughts. Um, and then the next thing is, uh, you know, that I, I can't really say anything about the story, because that's just personal preference. I mean, you know, either you like a type of story or you don't. But um, for the maps, certain transitions need to be worked on, like the transition from um, leaving the elves... Uh, like the, okay, let me start from a good, a good transition. When I'm in here, when I come here, and I go... Actually, you know what? The very first transition was kind of threw me off. Um, leaving Protector's Enclave through that tiny little sewer grate or and it, well, it's not like a tiny sewer grate. It makes me think of like a um, like an old-fashioned sewer in like Paris or something, you know, where it's you're going into the lower part of the city into the tunnels. Coming out here, where obviously is just like a an alleyway or an entry, you know, like an entryway. That didn't seem consistent. It would almost be better to have the player leave through one of the main gates and say that they're traveling a good distance through the city. And then they arrive in this this suburb or this, you know, little part of the city. And then the transition from here, inside the uh, the cloak and dagger, was good. You know, it, it worked. It made sense. Um, but the transition from here, from this suburb, to the dwarfs. Well, actually, no, let me go back a step. Um, that once you're inside the uh, the guild hall for the elf, the very final transition where the door just like appears and it's like in a corner and it's kind of floating off the wall, I would redo that transition. Um, it would even be okay to have the player like backtrack through the guild hall and leave through the exit that they came into. I mean, that would totally make like logical sense, you know, in space. You know, like a person walking around and then going in and coming out. Um, and the the dwarf crypt, that that doesn't it doesn't really fit in you know walking into a building like when you can look and be like oh look here's let me give you an example like oh look here's a building okay this is you know whatever you want to call this it could be you know apartments it could be like a library I mean it could be anything your imagination wants it to be and then walking up to you know like a stoop with like a door and then entering in here but then on the once you go through coming out inside a, a crypt where there's like a dungeon entryway and it, I don't know it just felt disconnected unless you explain that in, in some sort of you know you could literally just have like a little invisible clicky you know that when you click on it it tells the player oh you're gonna walk to the basement level of this building you know something that just gives people a sense of like what's going on I think would work better um, yeah and maybe look at other people's uh, examples like for ideas of how to populate your map with like details because a lot of the details just seemed out of place and they, they didn't really match up like see these columns here they're the same color as this back wall and even though this part is square and comes you know it comes down it's square and the columns are, are rounded this um b this brick this uh this block like stone block pattern is repeated somewhat on these like lintel pieces and also on like the step so that kind of helps tie it in you know this just as, as an example and you know like same thing with like the wood pieces you know they're 
there's enough color variance that it looks different, but they're within the same I don't know, tones and shades that it's aesthetically pleasing. You know, that kind of stuff. Think about that when you're putting together your map. And also think of, like, uh, the, the context of what's going on in the map. Like, the blood... whatever you want to call it, fountain, altar, summoning pool, whatever. It didn't really fit into the entire rest of the map. Like, is that crypt the dwarf's home? Or is it... like... I mean, like, what was that supposed to be? You know, what is the crypt supposed to be? If it's his home, why is there, like, a blood altar there? Or a blood pool? Is he an evil, like, person? And he's, like, collecting blood, or he's killing things and sacrificing them? Or he's something to do with dark magic? You know, like... Think of context, and then, you know, that'll help the character, the player, you know, pick up on the context. Alright, well, I think I'm going to end it there, because I'm going to try and think of how I want to word my uh, review. Um... Well, uh, this is Visigoth, and uh, it's a personal note to the author. Um, I, I hope I didn't come across uh, too impolite. <laughs> but uh, good luck on your map, and uh, thanks for the review on mine. <laughs>